Hi everyone, and it looks a little blurry, so that's better. <laughs> um, welcome to um, EDU CA 630, which is Principles and Strategies for Teaching ESL to Elementary and Secondary Learners. Um, so I just wanted to start by saying thank you so much for providing me um, you know, a, a bit of space and grace with the death of my father. It was very much an unexpected um, occurrence. It wasn't something any of us were expecting, and he was relatively young. So it is a uh, difficult time for me and my family. So I really appreciate your emails and your understanding that we had to kind of pivot. And uh, your first week, you had to you know, just kind of Get, get things done, um, and I, I really do, can, cannot say enough how much I appreciate that. That being said, though, this is a new week, so I figured I will take the time to record a very quick overview of the course and the syllabus, even though I know you've already started submitting assignments. Um, I figured this might help a little bit in lieu of the um, live session that we were going to have. So I'm going to skip a couple of the first pages, which are really just the standards and objectives of the course, and you're more than welcome to look at those um, at your leisure. You should all have the text, which is um, by Haynes and Zacharian of Teaching English Language Learners Across the Content Areas. Um, if this is your first online course, which it might be or it might not be, um, just a quick reminder that online does not mean easy. And most people get that and understand it um, pretty well. But something that I always also make certain to say with online courses is that something that is different with an online course as opposed to in-person course is that you have to assume that technology is going to fail you at the absolute worst time that it could fail you. So your computer is going to crash or your Wi-Fi is going to go out right when you're ready to submit an assignment. It just kind of like Murphy's Law. So that being said, really try to plan ahead. I know summer courses are tight as far as a timeline. I feel that on the grading end. I know you feel that on the completing and submitting assignments end. So I know you can't always think ahead as far as, or, or work ahead um, as far as the time being kind of crunched, but just kind of thinking like trying not to <laughs> complete the assignment at, you know, 11.52 at night when it's due at midnight. Um, can, can help alleviate a bit of that. But also know that I will provide grace and space for you if, if an emergency happens or something unexpected, like, you know, in my personal life right now, I will provide you extra time to complete your assignments if necessary. I just need to know as soon as possible that you're not going to be able to submit the assignment on time. So if you have a death in the family, an illness, a hospitalization, whatever it is, you have to let me know because if you don't let me know immediately, then I don't know not to grade accordingly when I don't see an assignment submitted on time. So just keeping that in mind for this semester. I'm gonna move into assignments. Um, for your major assignment is the, the EL case study. So for this assignment, you're going to select a student who is an emergent bilingual learner um, for your case study. And you're really trying to gather data, information about this child as far as their educational history. And you're, you're trying to learn about what are some of the challenges that this child could have socioculturally that actually influence learning outcomes for these kiddos. Um, you're also going to need to identify the student's level of language proficiency and literacy in your native language as well as um, in their native language, as well as their second language, which is English. So utilizing multiple tools like student interviews, classroom observations, your students' records, their WIDA test results, their can-do charts, um, to really analyze and, and get to know it. So knowing that it is summertime, I know this makes it a slightly more challenging um, assignment. However, I'm hoping, <laughs> really hoping, that either you've had a student very recently where you could access these materials and um, this information, or that you could tap into the expertise of um, a teacher within your class, within your school, your ESOL teacher or someone else who would be able to provide you this information for the summer. So we'll have two sections. The first one is your summary section where you just summarize what you discover about this history of the student. Um, the data must include these seven things, but it could be 
and more could be added in addition to it. So where were they previously schooled, if they were schooled at all prior to entering the school that they are currently in, what educational programs they um, the student was served in, um, their language of instruction. So did they ever receive instruction in their native language? Their language testing information, so looking at their WIDA scores, how is their English language acquisition um, developing? What is their academic achievement? What are their experiences and feelings about school? And then socio-cultural challenges. Um, and so that is the first section, the summary section. And the second section is the reflection section. And this is really, you know, if the first one is all about the kiddo, this is really about you interpreting what you've learned about EL students and connecting, okay, so if this child has this kind of background and history, then wow, how is this going to impact them? Um, your reflection should include one area that you would consider your number one priority and identify some instructional strategies to help your uh, EL student develop in this area. Um, so if you're, you're looking at their WIDA scores and you notice that their speaking um, score is pretty low, but while their listening one is just off the charts, you know, what does that mean? What, what then would you use as some instructional strategies to help that child? Um, Keep in mind that this assignment should be typed, double spaced, in 12 point font, and about four to six pages. And that does include your title page and your reference page. So keeping that in mind. There is an assignment grading rubric associated with this assignment that helps you dig down more into what the specific grading criteria are. But this is just the overview of it. Your next, next assignment are your module assessments. Um, so these really basically are helping me know that you actually are reading the material and watching the videos. You have two that you will complete over the course of the term. Um, so you'll watch the module assessment videos, reflect on what you've learned from the videos and how you could apply these strategies um, in a classroom setting. And then you post your reflection um, responses to the questions on that discussion board as well. Um, you receive 75 points for each one, so it's 150 points total. Those are pretty cut and dry, um, watching the, the video and then connecting what you're watching um, based on the course uh, readings and chapters as well. Your WIDA can-do name chart is worth 50 points. You're going to write um, a WIDA grade level can-do descriptor chart on Blackboard, and you're going to create, uh, oh, sorry, you're going to use that, and you're going to create a WIDA can-do name chart that you can use in your own classroom. And so if you look at the module, you'll be able to see where this assignment is located and the directions and resources for that. And then throughout the course, you're going to have discussion um, questions. So you will have um, not only the expectation of um, originally po posting your original thoughts and replies to the questions, but then also responding to at least two colleagues posts. Um, so you really need to post your initial response first before you reply, because then that gives other people the opportunity to reply to you as well. And so there is a rubric farther down in the syllabus that gives you more information about how you can earn um, total points for this. You're also completing a self-evaluation and reflection journal. There'll be two of them. The first one you should have just completed, and it really just asks you questions about what do you think you know? <laughs> what do you know or what do you think you know about these kiddos and how they are educated and um, really thinking about um, your initial ideas about it? And then, of course, at the end of the course, which is always my favorite part, is then you're going to write again what you've learned, what's changed about what you thought you knew or what you knew, um, and what growth have you seen in yourself over the course of the semester. And then your final assignment is a lesson plan and rationale. For this assignment, you're expected to design a lesson plan that not only gets at the content that you want to teach, let's say you're a, a middle school um, math teacher, but it also integrates the teaching of language. That's, that's the thing that, that our EL students need. Um, they need both and, both the content and the teaching of language integrated together. So it should be based on your, um, on the linguistic needs and content area focus for our instruction. So you want to identify the grade level or the content area, depending upon what grade you're teaching, what the lessons language and content objectives are. So there should be language object objectives and there should be content objectives as well. What language skills they'll be um, addressed in the lesson plan, whether it's listening, speaking, reading, or writing, um, what the content area vocabulary will be, and what the instructional strategies will be. Um, there is a template 
um, and it's actually within the course. Um, and that says in the syllabus, but it's within the course. Or you can use a school approved lesson plan, but you still need to include all of these elements within it. If you use a certain kind of lesson plan at school, perfectly fine. You just have to make sure it has the things that, sorry, most language or most lesson plans don't include for our EL students, which are language objectives, key targeted academic vocabulary, the number of ELs in your class, and the WIDA levels. Um, and so then you are going to submit these lesson plans with a copy of the um, materials that you would use for the presentation or for any other portions of the lesson and the assessment. And that assessment, y'all, it does not need to be a summative assessment. It does not need to be a quiz or a test. It could be you know, a formative assessment. It could be something that the child completes there in the moment um, of that lesson. So just keeping that in mind as well. So that's the lesson plan part. And then the rationale is a one to two page um, description of your lesson plan. Like walk me through it. Um, tell me why you chose a lesson like this. Why did you choose the language skills that you chose? Um, why did you choose the instructional strategies that you chose um, to support these kiddos in their learning and language development? And you're also going to explain what kind of opportunities do you plan on providing these kiddos to apply their new learning and really demonstrate mastery. So that is a quick summary of all of the um, assignments within your course. You can see the uh, weight for each one as well as the overall grading scale for it. I do reserve the right to make changes to the course as I need to, but I don't usually do that. So everything should stay the same. Um, and again, like I said about, about due dates, like this is my assignment and due date you know, policy, but something happens that you need to communicate with me. That's the last part. Please communicate with me if there are extenuating circumstances that are affecting your ability to turn in an assignment on time, because I don't know unless you reach out to me. You'll see the course schedule is here as well. Um, I know last week we started with module one. Um, I'm sorry that this course overview is coming a little bit later, but again, thank you for your patience with it. Um, you'll see that in the week of July 4th, there are no assignments. That doesn't mean you can't work that week on assignments. It just means that there aren't any um, during that week. If you wanna take that week off, go for it. Um, and you'll see all of the major assignments that are due as well. As I mentioned earlier, there are rubrics for each thing um, listed within the syllabus. So you'll see a discussion board rubric. How are you gonna earn full points for that? For your lesson plan rubric, how are you going to earn full points for that as well? And then for your EL case study, how will you earn full points? So for your major assignments, you have those. Oh, there was a lesson plan template. Okay, oh, I did put it here. <laughs> so here is the lesson plan template. If you want to use it, again, you do not have to. It's just here um, if you would rather use that instead of your own. Um, so that's the very quick uh, summary of our course, overview of our course. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me um, and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And I'm excited to learn with you this semester. Thanks so much.